and welcome to the Automated Home Show. Today, I'm going to be giving you a little update about the state of my smart home or lack thereof, For uh, if I'm being perfectly honest. And firstly, let me apologize for being a bit quiet for a little while. Turns out having a baby is... <laughs> It makes you uh, tired and it's a very, very busy time. So I've been struggling to find the time. My apologies, but hopefully I can try and make it a little bit more of a regular thing moving forward. By the way, I'm going to be sharing this one on YouTube and also as a podcast, audio only on podcast. So if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to drop a like or a comment. And if you're listening on uh, podcast directory, leave a review. Why not? Okay, so let's jump into what's happening a little bit of a funny story today. So we live near a shopping mall. It's only a few hundred meters away. And earlier today, my wife and I were having a bit of trouble getting our baby to go to sleep. Yeah, it's like an ongoing thing we fight with every day, right? So if you're a parent, I'm sure you can um, empathize. But we realized that if we put him in the baby carrier, this ergo baby carrier that we have, which we love, he sleeps really, really well, which doesn't make any sense to me because it's noisy, it's bouncy, but yeah, apparently he sleeps like a baby. So my wife put on the baby carrier and she grabbed the baby and she went for a walk to the shopping mall that's a few hundred meters away and then it started to rain. And the rain usually would pass in 20 minutes here where we live, but today it went for, I don't know, an hour or so. So she kind of got stuck there. Anyway, so I ended up having to run down there and take the umbrella down to my wife so she could come back with the baby and feed the baby. And I got stuck there without the umbrella and, you know, it's no big deal. I could have walked home, but I decided to just stay there and walk around the mall. And when I was there, I went into this store that they have there. They sell some smart home products. Not many brands that you'd probably recognize, but they do have some Akara products. And what else have they got there? Um, I'm not sure, but look, let me cut to the chase here. I actually bought a couple of things today. So here's the receipt I bought. Let me show you what's in the bag. I got, oh, this is funny. Yeah, I got this water leak sensor. It's a Zigbee water leak sensor. It's a T1, Akara T1. I bought this for two reasons. So the first reason is I am just hankering to add some smart devices to our home here because I've got the Homey Pro Hub. I've got the, I've got Alexa running, right? But I really, I'm trying to build around the Homey Pro Hub. And besides the Sonos Arc soundbar and the sub in the living room and the television, like there's really nothing else smart in our home that I can connect to the Homey Pro. So I'm just dying to buy some products that I can plug into the Homey Pro Hub ecosystem and start playing with them. I believe this will work with Homey Pro. Additionally, this actually does solve a real problem that we have here in our home. We have a water filter in the kitchen and it's painfully slow. So what happens like almost every day, either to myself or my wife, we'll be running some filtered water. So we have some drinking water and it's so slow that you just, it's so easy to get distracted and walk off and go and do something else. So at least once a week, we walk into the kitchen and it's flooded because one of us has forgotten about it and it's been running for 10 minutes or half an hour or something. So this actually gives me peace of mind if I can get it to work, but this is what I'm going to try and do with this one. I want to put it in a position in the kitchen so that if that happens again, we're going to get notified immediately. So I'm pretty excited about this one. That's not just a novelty. That's actually solving a real problem that I have. The other thing I have here is a, again, a Cara. LED bulb T1, tunable white bulb. Now, both of these products, they say you need an Akara hub. I don't think that is going to be the case. And the reason for that is when I was in the store, I opened my Homey app and I searched for these products, Akara, and they have in the Homey app, they have these products exactly right there. And I know the Homey Pro has Zigbee, capability. So I'm pretty certain. In fact, I'd be shocked if these don't work with Homey. So I'm really, really excited to get these set up. As you can see, still in the box. I literally just got home and I thought I'd just spin up the camera and share a little update with you. Exciting. I have on my to-do list for tomorrow to 
go shopping. I need to buy some more smart home products. I want to buy some more smart home devices just so I can add some smart devices to our home here. Ideally, they should be compatible with Homey. And actually, it's very helpful. I notice Homey on their, I believe it's on their website somewhere, they have um, a guide of products that are compatible with Homey. So that's really, really cool. Now, for me, I live in Malaysia, so I have an additional layer of complexity or an additional problem to solve. And that's, I can only buy products that I can get shipped here to Malaysia. Alternatively, I could probably buy something and get it sent to Australia. Baby's, baby's awake, sorry. Um, I could maybe get something sent to Australia and then get it sent up from Australia. Or, you know, maybe I could get something sent to some friends in the States and they could send it over here. But it'd just be easier if I could focus on the products and the options that I can get shipped directly here to Malaysia. And there are some. I looked at the Homey recommended products that are compatible with Homey. And there are actually some brands. I think Akara could be one of them. So I probably could have got these things for cheaper had I bought them online, but I was just too excited. By the way, this water sensor, I think it was about 25 bucks. And this light bulb was about $22. It's pretty expensive, right? I mean, I'm sure it's cheaper online, but yeah. First of all, I need to just... I've only got one, as you can see. I just want to get it going somewhere for one and then calculate the price and how many of the light switches we have around the home that I want to make smart. So, yeah, that's on my to-do list to go shopping because I'm at the fun stage now where I just need to go and buy some more smart home products to build out some things. But I also want to be mindful of not just buying things because it's a fun toy and it's a novel thing and I've got a funny story about that I'll share soon. Things that are ideally helpful and either improving security or convenience or comfort or solving some real problem like this water sensor will. Funny story about just doing a novel thing that's actually not very helpful. Something else I just recently added in the last week or so is this. I had this Muras door sensor. Had this sitting here. I thought, okay says that it's compatible with Alexa, I think. Does it? No. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it... On the box, it only says Apple HomeKit. Apple Home. But it is actually compatible with Alexa, right? So I just wanted to get it going and see if I could get it working. And um, yeah, it's great. But the question is, now that I've got this door sensor on our front door, what can I do with that? Because we don't have cameras yet we don't have smart lighting yet we don't have much yet we don't really have anything like i said besides the the living room soundbar sub television this is like the next smart product that we've got right so i was sort of scratching my head thinking okay i've got this new toy i've got this door sensor on our front door i want to do something with it because i'm itching to do something smart what can i do so i came up with a, a pretty silly novel idea to just play a Positive affirmation every time the door opens. Well, not every time. Suppress that for five minutes, right? But the problem that we have, well, two problems. Firstly, it's not actually helpful. It's not, it's not actually solving any real problem, if we're being perfectly honest. It was just me saying, hey, look at this. You open the door and this positive affirmation plays. Like, that's cool, isn't it? My wife didn't really like it from the beginning. But she really, really didn't like it. <laughs> About 24 hours later, she was sitting on the couch trying to get the baby to sleep and then I came in through the front door with a handful of groceries and yeah that went down like a bunch of lead balloons so that Alexa routine got killed there and then unfortunately this Muros smart door sensor although I can get it working with Alexa so that's great that's something it's not compatible with Homey Pro at the moment so that's why I'm, I'm so excited about these products that I bought today and hopefully some more that I'm going to buy tomorrow if I have some time. Today's Saturday afternoon. So tomorrow, it's on my to-do list. How fun is that, right? How fun is that? That's my job tomorrow. I need to just buy stuff online. Sounds fun to me. So anyway, yeah, that Alexa routine got killed. It's not actually solving any real problem. The only thing I've got here at the moment before getting these products that I've just bought up and running, the only thing that I've got that is actually helpful it's not actually an automation. It's something that runs on voice control. I've got an Alexa routine set up where if I say a certain command, my Sonos Arc soundbar will tell me 
today's date, the weather forecast, the sunrise and sunset. It'll tell me an interesting fact from history and it'll play classical music for half an hour in Amazon Music. So that's pretty cool. And I like the fact that it's voice control, not automation, because it means if people are sleeping, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to trigger it. But if it's a convenient time in our household, I can just say the magic words and I can get all of that stuff right there and then. So that's actually pretty cool. But like I said, I am excited about getting some more products up and running. Another product that I have sitting around here is, I've got this, how do you say this? Anki Creator Pro Camera. And it says on the box that it works with Alexa. So let's get it going. Let's try that one as well. I think my policy on cameras will be outside. Sure, outside because it's improving security. It's giving me peace of mind. That's fine. That's great. But in terms of inside the only camera that I think I want is something for baby monitoring so that if my wife and or myself were in a different room and we hear a noise or we just want to check on him, we don't have to go in there and risk waking him up. We can just have a look on the camera. So I think I'm, I'm fine with that, but I don't really want to have any other cameras inside. Speaking of peace of mind... I realized today that even without having any other smart devices or any automations running on the smart door sensor, this one, I'm still getting value from this. And it's just peace of mind. I realized I can look in the Alexa app and I can look at the history and I can just see a history of when the door opened and closed. And you might say, oh, what's the good in that? For me, Let's say we go away for a few days or for a longer period of time. I can just know for sure when I look at the history that the front door did not open when we're away. Of course, security will be improved as soon as we can add a camera outside, maybe on a couple of different locations outside. But even without that, it's just I'm getting some value from this and I didn't actually realize that until today. So I'm enjoying that. So that's kind of the update. Oh, something else that I learned with regard to connecting Alexa with Homey, and I'm not sure if people, if this is widely known information, but for me, it's something that I just learned today. In Alexa, <clears throat> I added the Homey skill to connect my Homey account with Alexa. Worked fine. And then I was really excited. And I thought, okay, great. That means this door sensor that I have in Alexa. Now that's going to work in Homey, right? No, that's not the way it works. Apparently the way that Alexa Homey integration works, unless I'm missing something, if I've got this wrong, feel free to tell me how it actually works. But my understanding after experimenting with it a little bit today is that Alexa skill to add Homey into Alexa, it's simply so that products you have in the Homey ecosystem can be voice controlled using Alexa, not the other way around. It's not so that products that you might have in the Homey ecosystem can now be controlled using Alexa. Hang on, other way around? I'm confusing myself now. Is that right? Other way around, right? So I've got this window and door sensor in Alexa, but I, I can't get it into the Homey ecosystem despite having Alexa and Homey connected. So that's something I learned today, but um, interesting stuff. So I'm excited for tomorrow. Hopefully I can buy a few interesting things and hopefully today I can get these things going as well. Um, yeah, this is actually solving a real problem we have in our home. So yeah, excited for this. Funny story. That's kind of it, by the way, in terms of smart home updates. So if you're not interested, uh, tune out now. But if you are interested in hanging around, a little bit of a funny story for you that happened a couple of days ago. We live very close to a food court that I love. I go there and eat pretty often. And a few days ago, I went there to grab a bite to eat and I was wearing my thongs, my flip-flops. If you're Australian, you call them thongs. If you're not Australian, you probably know them as flip-flops. Anyway, I've got my flip-flops on, right? And I've actually got two pairs. Oh, at this time, I had two pairs. I had a new pair and I had an old pair that I was expecting to die at any moment. The old pair that I was expecting to die at any moment, my policy on those ones is... I only wear them around the home and very, very close to the home. But if we're going anywhere further away, for example, to the food court, I will wear my newer flip-flops that I've got a lot more confidence in. So anyway, I put on the newer flip-flops. I go to the food court and it's not that far away. It's like a five or 10 minute walk away. So not that far. And then I get to the food court. And these are my new flip-flops, by the way. These are the ones that I'm not expecting to die. I'm expecting them to last a while. 
And I grab my food and at that moment, I have a blowout. One of my flip-flops, I have a major blowout. And at first I thought, okay, no problem. I'm just going to push it back in through the hole and I'm going to be good to go. But I looked down, it was a fatal death blow. So I'm standing there in the food court and I've just had one of my flip-flops, one of my thongs die. It's dead. There's, there's no fixing it. So I'm thinking, what am I going to do here? Am I going to just take the other one off and walk home barefoot? Or am I going to walk home with one? And standing there for a couple of minutes, I realized that I could sort of pinch the broken one. I could pinch it with my big toe and the, the next toe. I could pinch it. And then if I slid very, very slowly along the floor, I could actually <clears throat> wear the thongs. I could actually wear the flip-flop. So that's what I did. I slid all the way home very, very slowly. And um, yeah, so my new foolproof flip-flops, they died on me before the old ones. So um, yeah, bit of a funny story. Anyway, I better wrap it up because it sounds like the baby is going to sleep. If you have any questions, if you want to get in touch, you can reach me, marty at automatedhome.com. Otherwise, have a great day and I'll talk to you again soon.